All right, so I'm taking a little break after doing some stuff in my shop for a decent part of the day. Um, sewing table and some stuff up here. Uh, some of you know what that shit is. Others are like, what the fuck is going on in there? Um, sort of like insulation, just for infrared light instead of through, like, heated up air. Um, it helps. And when you've got, like, actual floor where you can't really put insulation or put much, there's like four inches of space in an area that recommends about 18 inches in the attic, and uh, gotta gotta do what gotta do what I can. Um, FYI, that shit is actually great. Strongly suggest putting it in. the The whole shop was like twelve dollars of that shit. It's really cheap. It helps. Strongly recommend it. Anyways, uh, this will wind up being a fairly short video. Um, what I want to talk about is another issue with Idacore and Nat, and um, part of this is more with Ida in general, although considering really the Ida 95 revision onwards has been pretty much at the discretion of Tugger Taft, who is at Ida Gore, um, I think, anyways pretty sure. Hopefully I'm not wrong on that one, but um, a lot of this, you know, Adicor inevitably has a lot of weight on uh, where Ida goes as a language, and um, they're still in large part at fault for, for, for this stuff. So this has to do with the Ida Standard Library. Um, specifically, we're talking about LibNAT, because I'm not going to comment on um, IBM or PTC's IDA offerings. Uh, I'm not sure if there are any others still like active, um, but I'm not. I'm not going to comment on those. I haven't really used them uh, in any major capacity. I mean, I've had people check uh, stuff on the other compilers, uh, but I, I haven't directly used the libraries. Uh, if you follow that, so this one is. They don't document their shit. And it's fucking ridiculous. I'm really big on documenting APIs. You know, if you're doing business logic, you know, your own internal business logic that nobody else outside of your business is going to see, you can get away without documenting it. That's fine. I'm not that level of hardcore. Uh, but if you are a library writer and your stuff is written for um, third-party consumption, it needs to be documented. The reason for that, it is possible to write fairly uh, self-documenting APIs. This is a thing you can, you, can, you can do. I still recommend documentation comments, uh, but you can still largely do it. The Ada Standard Library is not set up that way. Uh, the example I love to give is the head and tail functions inside of um, ada.strings.fixed. Head and tail do two different things depending on the parameters you pass into them. And that's just fucking bizarre. Head can truncate Starting from the left, if you if you're if you want like the head three uh, three characters, it'll take the first three characters and truncate the rest of it. That is pretty expected behavior and is what most people would know as head. You know, some some APIs call it like left truncate and right truncate, um, but head and tail are fine for those. But head and tail also pad. And there's no pad function in, in, in the Ida standard library. It's just head and tail. Which means two things. One is just sort of a bad design choice that if you want to pad uh, three characters onto a string, you have to calculate that. 
And that's not particularly hard to do. You can use the length attribute and plus three, and it's pretty easy. It does make the code a little bit weird looking. Um, that's the kind of thing that should generally be provided in an API. It's not, it's not hard to do. It's just cleaner looking. And you want third-party code to be as clean looking and as easy to write as possible. Uh, this kind of thing also helps create self-documenting code. So, yeah. You know, it, it's always good when the function name is as clear as possible. And head with a length that is larger than the string you're passing into it is just not good at creating self-documenting code. But the other problem with this is that it's one function doing two different things. And that's just not good separation of concerns. This is not an isolated situation within the at a standard library at all. I really wish it was. Um, I, I really wish it was, but it's just, it's not. Uh, and none of this is documented within libnat. If you want to understand this behavior, you have to go straight to the, um, straight to the add a reference manual, which it is a good idea to know the add a reference manual if you are an added developer. Um, I, I strongly recommend that, but the simple fact is a lot of this stuff you could copy pasta into doc comments into libnat. Uh, Idacore even offers natdoc for handling uh, documentation comments within this stuff, and they could provide a website similar to docs.microsoft.com to provide all of this for libnat and for their own um, nat library, whatever they're calling that. But <sighs> there's another problem, more so with the ADA standard library itself, regardless of who's implementing it, that I'll, I'll, I'll touch up on now because I really think it should have been um, re-implemented. Something similar to what D did and I, I do understand a lot not a lot of developers are too familiar with D nowadays but D had a different standard library than it does now and you could probably still use the old standard library but the community developed a new standard library because they weren't happy with the old one and it's a lot better. I think Ada needs to do that. It, it, say like, fuck the old standard library and develop a new one. Because there are problems with the existing standard library. There, there's a lot of instances of um, like a procedure with one output parameter instead of a just returning that through a function call. And the thing is, um, passing that through an out parameter prevent certain optimizations that IDA can take advantage of. Uh, C++ programmers are definitely going to be aware of wh what these are. Uh, named value optim named return value optimization and return value optimization. IDA can take advantage of those, but not if you're outputting through an out parameter. You have to output through the return value of a function. I also think for that kind of thing, function calls are just sort of better. Output parameters have their place. I'm glad they exist in the language. Uh, C Sharp was really bad for a while because it didn't offer output parameters. It does now. It helps. So I, I, I'm glad they're in Ida. But y you need to be passing things through a return value as much as possible. And the Ada standard library does not do that. There are a number of other problems, but YouTube is being weird and is sort of encouraging shorter videos now. So I'm trying to keep these short and like break them up as much as possible. So that'll be it for this one.
Um, until the next, have a good one.